Manu Samoa, Western Samoa's rugby team, the darlings of the World Cup, and this year winners of the Hong Kong Sevens. And that's a remarkable achievement for such a small country. But Samoan rugby means more than just sporting triumphs. The success of the team has done wonders for the spirit of Samoa, which took a battering from Cyclones Val and Offa. Last weekend, Scotland's national side played a test against Samoa and found they were playing more than a team. They were playing the pride of a nation. Michael Wilson with this report. Everyone need, needs their heroes, I guess, and the Manu Samoa is uh, uh, following that bill uh, on the islands here. Um, I think uh, people throughout the world are now aware of uh, uh, this little dot in the, the South Pacific. What's put this tiny nation of 160,000 people on the map is the success of its national rugby team, Manu Samoa. Done him by Richie Collins. As they move it wide again, there's numbers here for the Samoans. Must be a try. Yes, no question about this one. A quarter finalist at the 1991 World Cup and winner of this year's Hong Kong Sevens, Manu Samoa is now one of the world's most exciting and successful rugby teams. They were greeted as heroes when they returned from the World Cup and the love affair continues today wherever the team goes in Samoa. As part of their build-up for the test match with Scotland, the team gets out amongst the factories and schools to thank the fans for their support. guys you're playing the Zupo game. I love it. Manu Samoa is the greatest in the world, isn't it? The team's most distinguished fan is the 83-year-old head of state, Malia Toa Taunumathili II. We are trying to, uh, to adopt all the best from outside, from outside and uh, may God bless the world of sports, the world of sports, and may God bless our team too. Thank you very much. Has it made some more proud? Very, very proud indeed. For homegrown players like Anatolea Ayalupo and Stan Tumalatai, the recognition and adoration is a recent thing. Ayalupo first played for the team ten years ago. Those years uh, when I uh, started, was uh, kind of a uh, low standard and the uh, motivation, uh, preparing for the game and all that, and uh, comparing to uh, these days, uh, it's a big difference. It's more than a game away <laughs> inside more. Well, it's a way of life. Yeah, it's just... Everywhere you go, it's one time more. And for the New Zealand-based players, making the national side is now a great honour. It's a privilege and an honour, well, because of the status that it's, it's reached in the last few years. So yeah, I'm proud to play for Winston Easter Samoa. So. Go! Squeeze! Does he? Manu Samoa became a force in world rugby after coach Peter Schuster called on one of Samoa's favourite sons, All Black great BG Williams, to become technical advisor for the World Cup campaign. Together they turned a good side into a great side, combining homegrown flair with the experience of players hardened by New Zealand's provincial competition. It may have been a bit of a you and us uh, type attitude. Uh, and in fact, it, it still does surface at times, uh, unfortunately. But um, once it, the, the, the boys get together, uh, there is this, this feeling uh, of, of um, you know, we are Samoan. And uh, uh, I don't think you're any less a Samoan because you, you live in New Zealand. Um, 
and, and the people uh, who, who are Samoan based uh, realise that, that they see uh, how uh, we adapt and, and how proud and, and loyal uh, to the cause uh, we all are and uh, I think that breaks down any, any barriers. Any regret for you that you didn't have strong Samoan roots when you were growing up? I think I'm discovering uh, my roots more and more. Uh, I was brought up in uh, New Zealand, born in New Zealand. And um, uh, my dad was Samoan and my mum was part Samoan, but she was brought up in Rarotonga. So uh, she couldn't speak Samoan herself. And uh, I, I never learnt the language, which is a great uh, pity to me. I'm just so happy to be able to you know, pass on all the experience that I have had in rugby. And, and to see it bearing fruit, it it's, uh, gives a, me a great deal of stimulation. Another key player in Manu Samoa's success is Captain Peter Fatialofa. After missing out on All Black selection, Fats joined Manu Samoa in 1988. If it wasn't for Samoa, then where we are now, I mean, where would I be playing? I mean, I wouldn't even be here talking to you. To be honest, you know. The, the success of Manu Samoa, what impact do you think it's had on New Zealand Samoans? You can see, like, it's just like here. They've got someone to look up to. And uh, our team has given Samoa an identity, I think. You know? Yes, I'm a Samoan and I'm proud to be one. The hope is this pride will now translate into tourism and trade. And already there are signs that team success is helping promote the country overseas. It is one of the desires of our tourist industry that we should uh, provide as much money as possible for the advertisement of our country. Um, we have not been able to do that, but uh, with the Manusam exposure in these international rugby football competitions, uh, certainly the Manusam has done what we have not been able to do. Uh, by direct uh, advertisement. Setting back Samoa's push for prosperity were two brutal cyclones in two years. They were the worst the country had experienced for over 100 years. There are few signs today of the devastation wrought by cyclones Val and Ofa. But the country struggled to get back on its feet after the loss of millions of dollars of income from traditional crops like coconuts, cocoa and bananas. But the success of Manu Samoa has lifted the spirits of this small Pacific Island nation. There's been no economic miracle for Samoa's people, but thanks to the team, there's never been such a feeling of unity and pride. As in any culture, without any identity, you you tend to sort of, uh, uh, you're sort of hopeless or nobody in a sense. Writer Meli Isaiah Isitolo did some of his schooling in Wellington. With Manu Samoa really <clears throat> uh, playing very well and putting us on the map, I guess our people in New Zealand have identified themselves with them very much indeed. <laughs> The game against Scotland is just a day off. With the Scots having thrashed Samoa's development side, Captain Fats gives the boys a bit of a rev up. What about those kids? Those kids at St. Stevenson. Those kids, man, to look at their, their eyes are. They respect us. They look up to us. Think about those kids when, when we go on tomorrow. This morning, we went and saw the head of state. And you see how happy he is? You know, he's 83 years old. You can see we just lighted his life up. It's still his birthday, you know. We've de dedicated all our games to him for this year. Wouldn't it be a good night for us to win tomorrow? Eh? We're all brothers, we're Samoans, and that's the way we are. Although the, a lot of us weren't born here or, or brought up here, we still have in common that we're all Polynesian, and um, basically all Polynesians are the, the same, brought up the same way, the same beliefs and the same ideals. Whenever, whenever we have positive results, it lifts the, the morale of the country, and. You know, we go overseas and they, they suddenly realise there is a place called uh, Western Samoan. As you go around New Zealand now, you just see Samoans are proud to be Samoans. They're just coming out of the, out of the woodwork. As the big day draws closer, the Manu Samoa spirit grows more intense.
on our pier park. We, we owe them one. And I think if we can't beat them on our pier park, as I said earlier today, we won't beat the All Blacks. We might as well toss it in. I will get it back to Oolonga today. They will try and, you know, slow the game up at times. So we don't get the ball in that area. the players they, they want to win for the people because the people believe in us but I think Samoa's got to this occasion where you know you can't win a more situation but you have to win all of them here it's there again for the Scottish backs for the Samoa backs colored Baenga going on his own the little dummy Baenga Midway 22 and halfway, the Samoan forwards get their first Kanu'u. It's there for their backs, but they're a little disorganized at the moment. Bayafali's out there. As is this man, Bayafali again. He's got men outside of him. And it's Danny Kaliupa that gets the try. Although Manu Samoa scored two brilliant tries, at half time they only lead by 12 to 8. We're losing ourselves down. Follow me, follow me, follow me. Do you know concentration? Lay your stakes in the hole. Concentration got on my ear. More got on points. That's what concentration is. One, two, three, bang. Squeeze. Squeeze. Released quickly again for Kellen. Up to Vaenga. Vaenga with a little chip through, giving chases to Lima. And Luca is up there from fullback and Lima. What does the referee say? Yes, try. Samoa's blistering pace and the heat are too much for the Scots. It's another triumph for Manu Samoa, 28 to 11. It's really had a, a big uplifting effect on, on the people generally. There's just a an absolute uh, unadulterated enthusiasm for, for, for rugby. Another one. Another one, yeah. Yeah, all, all those different things have, have really uh, contributed to a whole uh, air of confidence and uh, an up and at them sort of attitude. And the Samoan rugby team will shortly play a nine-game tour of New Zealand, including an historic first-ever test in New Zealand against the All Blacks. And that tour begins early July. And we'll be back after the break. <laughs>